Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. New tonight, former President Donald Trump makes his first public appearance since a man attempted to assassinate him over the weekend. More on night one of the Republican National Convention coming up in just a moment. But first, we are tracking a severe weather threat that could move in while you are asleep tonight. Glad you're with us on a busy night in the Local 4 newsroom. I'm Devin Skillian. And I'm Kimberly Gill. Ron is in for Kim Adams tonight with a look at what we can expect overnight, especially. Hi, Ron. Hello to you, Kimberly and Devin. We are tracking some of those storms as they're just starting to enter into southwest portions of our state. We are still some hours away from that threatening weather getting into our area. But let me show you what's happening as we go over toward southwest Michigan. Severe thunderstorm warnings already popping up as you get into the Benton Harbor area and under a tornado watch several counties, including as you get over to the Kalamazoo area and Portage places that have already seen enough when it comes to severe weather here in our region. Now, going over toward Chicago, active tornado warnings. That activity moving in our direction, I think this line weakens somewhat as it gets into our area, but we could still get some gusty winds and there's some potential of flooding. Flood watch going into effect in just under an hour for Livingston, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, and Wayne counties. That goes until 8 o'clock in the morning. The main threats tonight for our area being the wind, hail, and flooding, but we cannot rule out an isolated tornado, and the greatest threat is going to be for communities that are along and south of I-69. I'm going to give you more details on what to expect throughout the night and for the morning coming up. All right, Ron. Well, a late night surprise at the Republican National Convention. Presidential nominee, former President Trump, walked in to an adoring crowd, and that was just one uh, part of a very busy day at the convention. NBC's Alex Barr is in Milwaukee with the details. For the third time in less than a decade, Donald J. Trump is officially the Republican nominee for president. Making a surprise appearance on the first night of the party's national convention in Milwaukee, having survived an assassination attempt just two days earlier. Former President Trump and the party celebrating his newly announced running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. The 39-year-old first-term senator, who is half Mr. Trump's age, rose to prominence with his 2016 memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, focused on growing up in rural poverty. The one-time Trump critic, now a fierce ally and staunch advocate for hardline positions on abortion and attacking the legitimacy of the 2020 election. Delegates cheering on their new ticket, galvanized by the former president's fist pump and vow to fight following the horrific attempt on his life. The devil came to Pennsylvania holding a rifle, but an American lion got back up on his feet and he roared. Former President Trump is now reportedly rewriting his Thursday night acceptance speech to focus on unity. President Biden pressing for the same in an exclusive interview with NBC's Lester Holt. There's, there's no place at all for violence in politics in America. None. Zero. Both candidates looking ahead as a 2024 campaign like no other enters a new stage. With a bandage on his right ear, former President Trump sitting next to his newly announced running mate, J.D. Vance, who represents a choice to lean in fully to the MAGA base. The Ohio senator positioned himself as someone who can carry the torch for future generations and fight for voters in the Midwest. In Milwaukee, Alice Barr, NBC News. All right, Alice, so let's talk about a very eventful 48 hours, which is certainly understating it. Very happy to have with me tonight uh, Stephen Henderson from Created Equal of WDET, Nolan Finley, editorial page chief of the Detroit News. Nolan, let me start with you. With, with so much here, counter-programming from the White House, trying to compete with this, with uh, Joe Biden doing something he hasn't done very often, which is a sit-down uh, interview with Lester Holt this evening. And then, uh, but there's the president with a bandage on his ear. Um, what struck you about... I don't even want to say the last 24 hours. That's not fair. Listen, I just watched the Teamster president <laughs> yes, give Sean a speech at the Republican National Convention <laughs> and get cheered by Republican delegates for bashing corporations. I really don't know what world I'm in right now. <laughs> Pretty wild. Stephen, how about you? Yeah, it's wild. I mean, the, the whole thing has this surreal quality right now, and I think we're all waiting to see 
where it ends up. Where does it land this week when Republicans do have the eyes of everyone on them and Trump uh, could be the old Trump who mm. blows this and alienates people? Or does he turn and try to embrace everybody and say, this is a moment where we need to we need to come together. Well, let me let you both react to the news of, of a running mate. My rule is always that a running mate can never really win you an election, but they can lose you one. Uh, I don't know if that's I, I don't even know if that's true anymore either. <laughs> but uh, J.D. Vance, uh, Nolan, you're not a big fan. I have a personal beef with J.D. Vance over his offensive book. <clears throat> wrote a column about it for uh, Hillbilly the news uh -huh. tonight. Yes, yep. um, but strategically, politically makes sense to me. He's a Rust Belt guy, has, is a very powerful vo voice for the Rust Belt states, and those are the primary battleground states, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. Yep. You know, so I think he can speak to the, to the voters. Trump needs to win this election. Stephen, I think you think that that, that choice uh, alienates a lot of women. Absolutely. I mean, and, and this election is going to be about independent women. Who do they show up for uh, in November? J.D. Vance is an extremist on the abortion question, uh, has said that women who are the victims of rape uh, and incest uh, have to balance their rights against the rights uh, of the child uh, that, they're, that they're carrying. That, that, that's nowhere near the mainstream on that issue. And the question here is, what do independent women end up doing? That is the balance. That's what hangs in the balance here uh, of these polls. A very narrow slice. Yes, you, you've got to get them. And, and I don't. He doesn't help you there. Maybe he doesn't hurt you. But I, we'll see ads real soon uh, talking about how he thinks about that. But one of the big stories of this convention that's not been talked about enough is the first, first uh, convention, first election cycle since uh, abortions become an issue in which Republicans have said, okay, it's not going to be a litmus test this year. The, pla mm -hmm. the platform moderated somewhat. Trump has changed his tone, to tone somewhat. In the debate, he said, um, I'm okay with the abortion pill. That's huge for Republicans who have made this issue, you know, the heart of their party for so long. We expect the Democrats will continue to try to make that, uh, their issue. I, the, the assassination attempt is still, Stephen, as we we talk, talked about yesterday morning on Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. If it had been, if he had been killed, mm -hmm. I can't even imagine the America we would all be talking about tonight. It yeah. would be insanity. But uh, where are we now? We've uh, we, we talk about, we all talk about. In fact, uh, Lester Holt took Joe Biden to task tonight for using the term bullseye. We've got mm -hmm. to put a bullseye on Donald mm -hmm. Trump. And we use all this militaristic jargon in our political discourse. You two, as founders of the Civility Project, <laughs> try not to do I'm that. really <laughs> curious about what you believe. It, 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 whether we're at a moment where we can actually come together, or is it a moment that only rips us further apart? Nolan, you first. Well, I think, you know, what we've seen, you know, from the folks we've talked to over the last couple of years about this, there is an appetite for a more civil society. People are distressed about this and fully understand what to do and, and how to get beyond this. But I think people are tired of being at each other's throats. But, but you have leaders uh, acting in, in different ways. I mean, uh, Donald Trump owns a lot of uh, the anger and the, the quickness to violence that people are feeling on the right. There's no other way to characterize that. Stood out in front of the White House uh, January 6th and said, hey, we're going to the Capitol uh, to overthrow the, the election. Um, I, I, I would like to see both of them, again, together say, this is not okay. We got to walk back from this kind of brinksmanship. Uh, we want to be president because we want to lead the country and we want to lead everybody. And that's not about common. But it's, it's very hard right now um, for them to tone down this re rhetoric because so far in the campaign, their singular message on both parties has been to fear monger about the other guy and to um, demonize the other guy. And you know now you, you've you've seen the last couple of days a more moderated uh, Donald Trump. Or actually, for the last few weeks, a more moderated Donald Trump. And you look at that picture of him up there on the stage, fist in the air. You know uh, that spoke strength. And you know. <laughs> Maybe. Look at <laughs> you look at Biden on on Lester Holt tonight, and you know over the last couple of weeks there's a weakness about him, and that well, contrast I don't see. You know it puts Democrats in a bad place because they've got no choice but to continue to go after 
Trump with the <laughs> harshest of language. That's right. Last thing. Uh, we, we, one of the things that has happened over the last 48 hours is there's a little bit less focus, obviously, on, on what's been going on with Joe Biden and the, and the talk mm. about whether or not he should be on the ticket. Uh, he forcefully, uh, is, uh, tonight with Lester, uh, still said that he belongs there and intends to be there. But what has what, what all of this done of these last couple of days? What has this done to that, Stephen? I think it changes the calculus somewhat. Uh, you know, it has put the focus on Trump uh, instead of Biden. Does that help the Democrats or uh, does it hurt them? I think if you're the Democrats, it's not about so much your candidate as it is about the messaging here. Uh, Donald Trump and the things he believes, if you go through this Project 2025 uh, proposal, which he, of course, knows nothing about, uh, I mean, this is a rewriting of mm. uh, the American fabric. And, and people need to know that that's what they're choosing if they choose him. I don't think most Americans agree with that. I don't think that's what they want. Quickly. It's always about the candidates, and I think particularly in this election, it's about the candidates. And, you know, people will be contrasting these two, uh, you know, and I think the events of the last couple of weeks, and particularly the last 48 hours, have changed the equation markedly in Trump's favor. You expect Joe Biden, though, to still be the candidate? I do. Okay. And, Stephen, you do it I've said since the last fall. He's going to step aside. Step aside. I know. All right. <laughs> Just one more thing that you guys don't quite agree on. That's right. Stephen Nolan, thanks so much. You. Really appreciate it. Kimberly. All right. And more news tonight. The jury says it remains deadlocked in the murder trial of Samantha Wool, which means still no verdict. Today, the judge called both the prosecutor and defense counsel to her chambers to address a scheduling conflict with a juror. Pamela Osborne joins us live tonight. Pamela, you've been talking to a criminal defense attorney who's been watching the trial. What is he saying? Well, Kimberly, he says it's unusual, and here's why. You're bringing in a juror to replace somebody who's already voted and whose vote has already been counted in a way. Criminal defense attorney Neil Rockind has been watching the case against Michael Jackson Bolanos play out, and this latest turn is unusual. Jackson Bolanos, who took the stand in his own defense, is on trial for the brutal murder of Samantha Wall. Many of us in, in, the, in the, the sort of the trial analysis legal community watched this trial and we thought, well, there's reasonable doubt all over this case. That could be the reason why the jury has been deadlocked. Adding an alternate to the mix changes the dynamic and starts those deliberations all over again. They're not deliberating like six to five or, hey, this is where, this is where we were before you joined us, juror number 13. They have to start exactly at ground zero. There's no way to tell which way the jury is leaning or what the hangups are, but Rockhine says the alternate juror's position could cause a big shift. I would not be surprised to see the jury come to a verdict relatively quickly when there's only one dissenting voice, whatever side it's for, if that happens to be the case. This is a real game changer. It's a seismic change in the jury room. And if there is a conviction or the jury is hung, he expects attorneys for Jackson Bolanos to request an appellate review of the case, saying the original 12 jurors were unable to reach a decision in this case. We'll just have to wait and see. Reporting live tonight, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. We will continue to follow it, of course. Pamela, thank you. And when a verdict is reached, we'll stream it live on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com.